Hey guys, it's me. So I've been trying to record a video because I'm making a candle and for some reason my phone keeps want wanting to dial 911. I don't know what's going on with it, but um, I'm just going to show you guys what I'm doing. And I have a double boiler here that I'm make making, um, melting some beeswax in. So see I have my little burner and I had some beeswax left over from some past projects that I have done and I wanted to make a beeswax candle because the beeswax candles, sorry, are more natural than you making um, a candle with regular paraf paraffin wax or however it's pronounced. So basically, I am melting some beeswax. I use a lot of chopsticks when it comes to crafting. Um, it just makes your crafting, doing your crafting stuff a lot easier. And it prevents you from ruining your good uh, spoons and stuff like that. Especially if you're doing anything that involves wax. You want to kind of try not to put metal on there because it kind of sticks and then you can't get it off. So I'm melting some beeswax that I had left over. And then I have my mold, which is this right here. And I just picked this up at Michael's. And then I have uh, natural uh, wicks that are coated also in beeswax. So these you can, they have a little tab on the bottom. You can just set it inside and pour your wax in. Or if you want it to be more centered, just measure it out. Um, with another two uh, chopstick and then just turn the wick and then when you put it in it will center to wherever it is that you're looking for it to center so it doesn't uh, it doesn't end up so wonky when you're doing this so basically it's a really simple process and you can get beeswax anywhere I just happen to have a lot of it left over from uh, when I used to do uh, deodorants. I used to make my own natural deodorants and soaps and things like that. And I used beeswax and some of the, especially like the lip balms and things like that. I used beeswax just to give it a little bit of a um, firmer consistency. So you can get your wicks. They come in a little bag like this. And then the other day when I was talking about uh, Sorry, as I'm mixing here. When I was talking about the altar space and I was talking about the altar cloth or, you know, your little, uh, whatever cloth it is that you want to use to put over the top of your altar, I talked about some uh, cloths that you could get at Walmart. And I just want to show you, I use these a lot for crafting, but it's a nice big square. It covers a nice space. These are great. They come like 12 in a package and you pay like $7 for 12. And I use these, like I said, I use them a lot in my kitchen, almost predominantly because they're, I can throw them away when they get all gross and stained and not really feel like I spent a lot of money on some towels. So, but this is it. And you can also, because it's cotton, you can um, use fabric paint or stencils and you can actually decorate it to your heart's content. You can dye it with that um, that little dye packets or any kind of like natural dye. These will take dye really well. So they come in really handy. Another tool is the chopsticks. They come in handy. I use chopsticks all the time, not only for cooking, but specifically for crafting because I don't want to mess up my good, uh, my good stuff. So the wax is melting and it's kind of going on its own. And if you wanted to do a candle where you don't want to, you just want to put it in a glass jar, you can literally just get some of those canning jars and just put your wax in there and your candle your candle wick in there and you've got 
a candle that is in a jar. The candle I'm making today is not gonna be in a jar. It's actually going to be pulled out of the mold and be a standalone. You can also add um, scents to it, like oils. You can add lavender oil or rose oil or orange oil, whatever scent you wanna make it. Uh, it's really easy. Add a couple of drops into your wax while you're cooking it or melting it and you should literally be good to go with your scented candle. Using uh, beeswax for your candle is a lot healthier, not only for you, but if you have pets. This is not gonna give off any kind of chemical into the air, which is why I prefer to use this. And my beeswax is white because I actually purchased white beeswax which you can find. You can see that I have some yellow in here. But I purchased white beeswax because I was using it for deodorant and I didn't want the deodorant to be yellow. So I just happened to get some white beeswax. If you're like me and you can't do any crafting inside of your home that's heat-based or cooking or anything like that, having one of these is fantastic. It's just a little burner. I bring it out here, I plug it, in, plug it in. I have electricity in this area of the house. So I plug it in and then I can do my cooking in here. And I also do, when I'm making any kind of um, clay or anything like that, I also use it, I also do that out here so that I don't have any um, crazy smells going on. So this is almost, like literally almost melted down completely. So you want to make sure that your wax, as you're heating it up, you melt it down completely. I'm using a double boiler and I picked this up at a thrift shop a couple years back and I specifically use it for crafting. I don't want to use it for anything else but to make crafts because sometimes when you're making stuff, you leave like a residue inside and if you're using it for crafting and for food preparation, that's not a good combination. So I would suggest, you know, investing in a, a used double boiler. Um, I think I paid like $4 for this and it works perfectly. Another thing that I'm using because I am going to be pulling the candle out of the mold is a candle release spray. And you just spray the inside of your mold with this and then pour your candle candle wax in and technically your candle should pop out fairly easily we shall see so i'm just going to spray this Oops. And this really sticks like chemicals, so you may want to um, do this, definitely do this outdoors. I'm just going to, another thing is I have a label under here and I am just going to get something to poke out the inside of the label. Another good tool, toothpicks. Toothpicks are a good tool. So you, the reason why you want to do that is because that's gonna allow some air in for you to be able to pull the mold out a lot easier if you don't do that your thing is not going to pop out the way it should so I'm just gonna position my thing here and let's see it looks like my wax is completely melted now so just gonna dry the bottom so I don't get any water in here and well let me lift this and show you guys see that it's nice and liquid form and then you literally are just going to pour it into your mold I'm just gonna let me do this so you guys can See, hopefully my phone won't try calling 911 again because it's been trying to do that all day. I am not in any kind of need of 911, but oh. 
and of course you're gonna have some dripping from the hole in the bottom probably could have used a whole heck of a lot more wax in here so it's gonna be a short short one probably gonna melt some more wax just use up all the wax that I have because so you guys know candle wax or beeswax candles are fairly expensive which is why I'm making my own because I literally purchased some candles the other day, uh, a dozen of them, and they were pretty pricey. I paid, I believe, I paid twenty, uh, thirty dollars for twelve candles, and although it can get pricey when you're doing. Uh, bees, well, when you're buying beeswax candles, they can get pricey. When you make them on your own, they're a little bit less expensive, especially if you can find a good um, supplier for your beeswax that will be able to, you know, you'll be able to buy it in bulk. So I used to buy my beeswax in bulk, which is why I still, I'm pretty sure I have bags of it still in the house. But my crafting days were kind of over too so I didn't really do anything but the beadwork that I typically do so so I'm just melting up the rest of the beeswax that I have again when you open that little hole when you pour in the wax it's going to spill through so don't put it on a tray which is what I did not do when I first started but see I have a little tray and I actually got this at um a Japanese dollar store that I go to but you can probably find a tray like this at the regular dollar store it doesn't have to be any frills I do a lot of when I'm looking for my crafting materials I do a lot of searching for stuff in Goodwill uh, not Goodwill because Goodwill is like overpriced but places like Saver and antique shops and things like that you can always find stuff that you can use to craft at a really reasonable price compared to what it cost to um to craft items to buy at like the michaels or something like that you know or to buy it new and the enamel double boilers are great because nothing sticks to the inside so that's pretty good it's they're fairly easy to clean but this is melting pretty quickly because the water is really boiling. These little hot plates are great to use. You just gotta be careful, especially if you're working in an area of your house where you're walking away that you turn this thing off because anything that falls on there is gonna get lit, you know? So. So I'm just going to melt this. Maybe the next time I make candles, I will go live. And if you guys have any questions, you can always reach out to me or ask me while I'm in the midst of doing this, so. But it's pretty simple, pretty easy. Just pour it right into your mold. Um, be careful with the double boilers because sometimes the water comes out from the, the sides of it. So if your hands are near, you might get burned. Be careful when you have kids running around that they're not, you know, going to get burned or anything like that. But I will take pictures of the finished candle when I'm done with it. You guys can see that. Because I'm at my 15 minute mark. So, or I'll do a little video of me taking it out of the mold. One of the two. But I'm going to let you guys go because this is going to take a while to finish melting. And so, actually, let me look at this. This might be enough to... I still have some hard parts in here, but... I'm just going 
finished melting the rest. So my candle is almost full to the top. You can see that? There's a lot of things you guys can make at home as opposed to buying, um, buying them. Even perfumes can be made at home. I used to make face, uh, I used to make lotions, I used to make soap, uh, laundry detergent, all at home. And they're easy to make and you save a ton of money. I did, when I made my soaps though, I used um, old-fashioned method of making soap so I didn't buy the blocks of melts you know where you, you melt the soap up and then you add your scents and stuff like that I actually made the soap from scratch which is fairly easy you just need fat you need uh, lye and a lot of elbow grease and that usually takes care of that so it looks like this is almost melted And then all I'm going to do is just let the candle sit for a couple of hours so it can get hard. And of course my my wick isn't completely straight but whatever. I'm not going to be too concerned about that because it's for my own use. Alright, just going to pour the rest of the little bit of wax that I have in here and that's it. I will come back when this cools down and show you guys what it looks like. Bye. Hey guys, so I am back um, wearing a different outfit because I had to run some errands while the candle was cooling but I want to, I was going to just take pictures but I decided to go ahead and do a video um, and this is the taking, taking the candle out of the mold. Now, you have to make sure you spray it really good inside because if not, it's gonna, you're gonna have a hard time taking it out. But you, if you're using, if you're making the candles for yourself, you can use like a butter knife or even a stiff piece of um, cardboard or plastic to kind of put in between the edges to just feel it out another thing that you can use because you can see how it's separated as it was drying is on your double boiler just heat up the water again and dip the candle in for a few seconds that'll soften it enough for you to be able to get it out so another thing again toothpicks push it There goes. So here is the candle. Um, could have probably used a little bit more drying time. So it cracked on the bottom, but that's okay. And it's wet because I had dipped it into the water to try to get it out. I'm gonna show you another tip with the uh, with your um, your double boiler. I'm just heating up a knife because I want to fix some of the cracks that are on the bottom because I don't want the candle to continue cracking. But it was still a little bit warm. I should have left it for a little longer. You can trim some of the top messiness off if you want to. Um, actually, I'll probably use this because it'll probably be better. Um, so you can do that. And you have yourself a pretty decent candle that you can use on your altar. Made by you. Again, I don't know if I mentioned this in the video, but you can add things like incense or sorry oils and flowers if you want to make your um your candle look pretty you can add all sorts of flowers around the edges of the mold 
and then pour it in and the flowers will be kind of all the way around. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do when you're making candles. I'm making this basically just to use, so I'm not going to make it really pretty. Um, I can if I wanted to put more effort in it. And I'll show you how to cut this. Where are my scissors? So you want to cut your candle wick a little bit. Just so that it's not too long. Right? And here's a tip. So when you use your double boiler, you're going to have a bit of wax that is going to be stuck to the bottom of your pot. So what you want to do is you're going to take the boiling water from the double boiler and you're just going to pour it in to the top part. This is going to remelt whatever wax is in there. And what I do, I just kind of move it around. Let me just turn this, turn this off. And you let it sit. And what happens is as it cools, all the wax that has melted because of the hot water is going to rise to the top. Boom. Easy cleanup. So I'm just going to leave this here to cool, cool down. And I will turn the candle on. Let me just get my lighter. So you guys can see. Oops. And I'm going to turn my fan off so that I don't end up blowing the light out. But there you go. Perfectly usable beeswax candle for a lot less money than you would pay if you ordered these they're really easy to make again you can make it really pretty you can add scent to it if you choose to add scent to it or you can just boom that's my starbucks cup you can just leave it as is put it on your altar whoops sorry guys you pop that in your altar and there you go. Got a beautiful altar candle that's made by you. While you're making it, you can do a lot of like, um, you know, meditating or prayers over it as you're making the candle. I, I believe that when you imbue things with positive energies, those positive energies kind of go into whatever it is you're making. And it ends up being a really good item for you to put on your altar shelf so that's that guys just wanted to share how to make a simple candle like i said i haven't made those in a long time sorry for all the shaky video tools of the train chopsticks double boiler toothpicks especially to pop the candle out you can just push it with the toothpick or the chopstick and that'll help it pop out um beeswax and if you want it scented scents if you want flowers in there flowers if you want glitter in there put glitter in there anything you want to do if you want to prepare the candle after you've made it you can carve a sigil on here and you can just put whatever oil you want to use just rub it onto the candle so you have a beautiful candle made by you very simple much cheaper so that's that. If you guys want to learn how to make anything else that I might have made in the past, I will be happy to share. So you got any questions, leave them in the comment section below. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.